Duke University was set up as a medical school to train clinician scientists. These are not just excellent clinicians who practice high quality medicine, but also those who will play a role in improving the practice of medicine. When Duke University was set up, we imported the curriculum from Duke, and the plan was to bring in a more modern approach so that the education level can be improved. So the solution that Dr. Kame and his colleagues came up was based on a concept introduced in business schools called team-based learning. So team-based learning has uh, traditionally been used for nearly 30, 40 years, but in business schools, but not applied in medical schools. So the question was, can we take the Duke curriculum and adapt it and make it work in a medical context? And that is what Dr. Kame and his colleagues did so very successfully in Singapore. Traditionally, medical schools, like most other schools, follow a lecture-based model of learning and teaching. In a lecture-based model, you passively listen to things, but you're not actively engaged in learning. Team-based learning allows an active engagement and therefore better recall and better long-term learning. There was a lot of skepticism when it was first introduced. There was concern that uh, moving in this form could be too radical, may not work, but Dr. Kame and Dr. Buckley back at Duke convinced Dr. Sandy Williams that this is worth doing. So the team-based model is very simple in principle. The students are provided with all the material they need to learn beforehand. They come to class. The first thing in class is to assess whether they learned the material. Then they go into small groups, re-learn, teach each other, retake the test. That reinforces the learning which first happened. Then they're given a complex problem which they have to solve based on what they already learned. This really requires them to learn, not just to understand, but learn to apply it, and that's why it's so powerful. So at the start, there were many individuals who were integral in making this real. They include Dr. Buckley and Dr. Colleen Krakowski at Duke, and obviously Dr. Kame and his very close partner, Sandy Cook. These are the main players who went through all the different options and who created the material, the sequence, for Team Lead to really become something real and useful. Along with Frank Starmer, who was the technology expert, to make this come together. This whole group collaborated with Professor Sukichi at Sing Health, and this collaboration is what made this entire experiment turn from a concept into something exciting, real, and very much a trailblazer for medical education. At first, we really didn't know how well this would work. What we started out was testing it, even when the applicants came first for their interviews. And we found that the interviews itself showed promise that the approach would work. And our initial classes, we obviously learned what worked and what didn't work. And over time, it has become really incredible how engaged the students are, how engaged the faculty are, and how quick and effective the learning is the key to the success of Team Lead were the facilitators. I've got to mention the people who started off, Janel Puttacheri, Suzanne Go, Charles Gulo, and Michelle John. We also had passionate educators among them, Wang Nianchi, Tay Suk Mue, Pierce Chow, Kon Oi Lian, Patrick Tan, Ivan Ang, Christopher Ang, and Lee Tishi. They were instrumental in putting together courses using TBL principles. We were very fortunate in having Doyle Graham become the inaugural course director. He was the Dean of Medical Education back at Duke, and he was a tremendous advocate for the program, very, very interested in making the program a success, and we expended an enormous amount of effort and advocacy in making it truly pioneering and incredible. Duke NUS was built to foster innovation, innovation amongst our medical graduates, but also it means innovation in how we approach learning, and that is what has happened with Team Lead. Team Lead has served as a trailblazer in medical education and has established Duke NUS as a pioneering institution for medical education of the future. The AAMC has written a report emphasizing the role of Duke NUS in this approach to medical education.
A lot of people have become interested in Team Lead. Because of that, we've established a fellowship program. And it's not only medical faculty, but medical students, medical graduates, and interestingly, many non-medical individuals have expressed an interest in participating in learning how to do something similar in the context of their own schools and learning. So in fact, a couple of the high schools in Singapore have also begun to implement variations of Team Lead. And we're indeed gratified that the interest in Team Lead has begun to expand in the last few years. Duke NUS is not going to rest on its laurels. It's not going to rest that we just created Team Lead. We're going to continue to innovate, improve, and interestingly, we also plan to play a role in figuring out how to expand it beyond its original intent and beyond its original scope to other areas of learning and education, both in Singapore and globally.